Hey guys, it's Ari. Today we're going to be benchmarking Vega Frontier Edition with Mac OS X using a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now, that being said, we're testing to see can an eGPU help with general compute, 3D modeling, gaming, or even rendering? So that's sort of the thing we're going to be trying to find out today is does an eGPU really matter and does it really affect the performance of your Mac compared to its internal RX 560? So the benchmark suite that I sort of developed for this is limited and not exactly scientific, but it should give you a good taste of what the benchmarks and what performance gains can be had by including an eGPU. If you guys are interested in the features of the external enclosure and the Vega Frontier Edition, please watch the part one video to this so that you can have a better understanding of sort of the card I selected, why I selected it, and what I'm using it for. For the first benchmark, I tested Geekbench 4 OpenCL Engine. This is sort of a general compute test to just see how good are the graphics cards in terms of basic computer number crunching tasks. The second benchmark was Unity's Heaven Engine which is a good basis for how well a graphics card can perform in something like gaming and how the frame rates will change depending on the quality of card. The third benchmark I used was Maxion's Cinebench R15. Now this is a pretty industry standard benchmark in terms of compute and in terms of GPU performance. So this was a little shocking considering I would imagine the Vega Frontier would be way better than the RX 560, but the numbers don't lie and it seems to be like that gap is very narrow. For the fourth and final benchmark, I benchmarked my main modeling software, Rhino 3D. Now it's important to me how well that performs because it's one of the softwares I use the most. So for this test, I decided to use a, a frame counter and how well does an eGPU pan the model that I'm working in. So I tested an old studio model and it's very large and has a ton of information and I put it in ghosted mode, which is the most difficult mode for Rhino to display. And I wanted to see, could I get a gain or a benefit from adding an eGPU to this modeling experience? And what I'll say is that even though the numbers don't look great in terms of the, the balance of how high they are, but that being said, there was a noticeable gain in smoothness and overall performance in the program. In conclusion, would I purchase an eGPU in 2018 if I was like the average person? Probably not. I would wait a year because I would wait for the software and programs to be optimized better to use an external graphics card. There are a couple weird things about an eGPU and OS X right now. It doesn't let you use it as only a compute card. So if you have a monitor plugged into your Mac and not into the eGPU, it doesn't see the eGPU at all in terms of usable compute performance. So that's super annoying. So if you own something like an LG 5K Ultrafine and you own an eGPU, they don't really work with each other, which is super annoying. So would I recommend the Vega Frontier Edition? God, no. Too expensive for the performance gain, but I do see the potential of this software and the potential of this hardware for future applications. Once OS X and Adobe and all these other large sort of creative suite companies get far more optimized, to use external graphics cards. It'll be a far richer experience, and it could be really beneficial later down the line. Also, I would wait until there's some form of official NVIDIA graphics support if your workflow desires it and you have a Mac, because that could be really beneficial in terms of being able to have whatever GPU your workflow needs. I hope you enjoyed that video, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, you can find out what I'm up to at Arikatech on Instagram.